All right, time to begin, time to begin the learning. So our first talk will be a, a fireside, sans fire, chat <laughs> on the state of the games business, business with research analyst Michael Pachter, Wedbush Securities. Come on up, Michael. And he will be speaking with Dean Takahashi. Come on back, Dean. Oh, Dean's talking with me? I thought I was just, oh, just, I'm just, just talking. Live? Oh, I'm just talking. No, oh, no Dean. No just Dean, me. no fire. Nah, I'm not gonna, I'm not sitting by anything. <laughs> I, I, I chose not to use slides today because every time I do, either Dean's in the audience or Jeff Grubb or Steve Peterson taking pictures of my slides and posting them before I've even said anything. Um, I'm, uh, I'm globally famous. Uh, if, you, if you Google me, the first hit will say, Michael Pachter is an asshole. <laughs> no, and then the next 3,000 hits will say the same thing. Um, I'm a stock market analyst. I tell or help investors to make decisions about public companies. I cover 24 stocks, uh, all the game companies, but, um, but among the stocks, Facebook and Twitter and Netflix, not very well. Um, so it's my job to understand the business and not to necessarily pick which games are going to work or, or whether virtual reality is going to take over. Um, so I'm, I'm an expert in reading financial statements. I'm really good at it. Uh, I'm not an expert on anything else. And the only reason I'm up here is that, that notwithstanding my, my inability to enlighten you, I'm quite entertaining. So uh, I, I, I'm always invited to try to get you guys to wake up in the morning. Um, and Dean pretty much gave my entire prepared remarks in the last 30 seconds of his speech. But fortunately, he, you know, he's not a very dynamic guy. And I know you guys were sleeping through it, so you missed it. <laughs> um, he said the $91 billion market. I have no idea how big the market is, but it's a lot of billions of dollars. It's tens and tens and tens of billions of dollars. Some guys measure hardware. Who cares? I mean, if you work in the games industry, unless you work for Sony or Microsoft or Valve, you don't care about hardware. If you, you, know, you care about people spending money for entertainment, and the money they spend typically is on software. It's either free to play or in a console game. Um, I started doing this 15 years ago. And just to kind of put that in perspective, Dean wrote for a newspaper back then. Do you guys, anybody in the audience know what a newspaper is? All right, so the, Dean did that. Um, there was no games beat. Uh, I think there probably were three or four online publications, but most of us weren't online. We didn't know what to do. Um, I looked through the agenda today. Esports didn't exist. I mean, if it did, you know, no one knew about it. Um, Twitch didn't exist. Glue Mobile didn't exist. Kim Kardashian existed, but I don't think that she was in a mobile game at the time or in, in anything to do with games. Um, you know, you go through this, you know, virtual reality didn't exist. We had a market that back in 2000, probably all in, the addressable market for the people in this room, if you're working in the same job you're now, was probably $10, $15 billion. And, and about a third PC, two thirds console. PC, uh, and that, that market was buy stuff. You would buy something. You would pay at the time 50 bucks you got a game you could play Madden football you could play FIFA and back then Spider-Man Tony Hawk you know those are the big names um, we had a lot of licensed properties it was hard for guys to come up with original IP the original IP tended to be PC so it was the Wolfenstein kind of stuff and Doom you know those things got ported over to the console and people got excited and if there were a game speak conference back in 2000 we would have been talking about console games. We would be talking about the end of the PC, everybody's buying a console, that's how you're gonna play a game. Now, you know, fast forward 15 years and look at this agenda and it is all either mobile, you know, what's a whale? I mean, whales didn't exist maybe in China, but they didn't exist in, in the Western world back then. You know, so how to monetize, how to attract an audience to your free game, give a game away, that didn't happen. So that was just, that's crazy talk 15 years ago, and that's where we are now. And I don't think there's a single uh, panelist, speaker today, who's gonna focus purely on console. Everybody is talking about maybe cross-platform play, doing lots and lots of stuff. So I've had a couple of presentations in the last few weeks. Uh, I, was, I was fortunate to be invited to DICE in Europe. Um, if you are interested in meeting the people who actually 
are influential and interesting and hard to get to know in the games industry, go to DICE in Las Vegas. That's an Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences event. It's February 16th, 18th, I think, 16th, 17th, 18th, something like that. Um, but go, because it's, it's a really great group and we actually drink hard and you can get to know everybody. Um, but I got to speak there and I had much, much, much more time than I do here. So I'm gonna get to the punchline. The punchline is, you know, that consoles don't need to exist. And you, those of you in mobile games know that because you're making a fun game. But the current state of mobile games is very much like YouTube and the current state of console games is very much like a, you know, a hundred million dollar Hollywood motion picture. So they're, they're different types of experiences. Most people on YouTube also go and see movies. Most people who see movies, if they, they're fine with short form videos, so they'll see YouTube. But I think those things are gonna converge. And if you think back to why consoles were invented in the first place, you know, the first video game that anybody played, you know, if you were old enough, was Pong. You know, we played Pong if you paid money. Obviously, we played Solitaire the first time we got a you know, PC back in the 80s. But Pong, 25 cents, popping into an arcade machine. And somebody, and it really wasn't Nintendo, it was probably Coleco or Intellivision or somebody, said, let's take the arcade machine. It's got a monitor, a joystick, and then some guts inside the box, which comes down to a CPU and a GPU. Let's take the CPU and GPU and put them in a box hardwire it to the television in the house, hardwire a joystick to that, and we'll sell a home console. And they had to come up with a business model. So we can't get people to pay us 25 cents every time they play the game. Let's charge them 50 bucks for the game, and they put the game on a cartridge. All right, now let's fast forward 30 years, because that was 85, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Here we are 30 years later. We all have a monitor in our home. We all have a CPU and a GPU in our home. It might be this. It might be a tablet, it might be a laptop. It's going to be the iPad Pro. It's gonna be the Surface Pro. It'll be the next home computer you buy, whatever that is. So once we have that, all we're really missing is a controller and then a way for all that stuff to talk. And the way that those things talk is Chromecast, Fire TV Stick, Apple TV, Roku Box. So very easy to replicate the console experience with a CPU GPU combo that's pretty damn competitive with current generation consoles. We won't be there with the iPhone 6S, but we'll be there with the iPhone 9, and we'll be there with the iPad Pro 3 and the Surface Pro 5. We're gonna have it. So it strikes me that if you can remove the table stakes for consumers to play games, if you say, if you want, the, the fast, you know, fast session, three minute, stand in line at Starbucks, gameplay experience, have a mobile game, go at it, have fun. If you wanna sit on your couch, play with a tablet, but if you wanna play Call of Duty and you don't wanna buy a console because you can't justify buying a console to play one game, we'll sell it to you a different way. Coming, that is happening. When that happens, and I'm calling that 2018, I think you're gonna see the market for actual paid games explode. So that market right now, good round numbers, $12 billion. Um, maybe a little bigger, because PC is hard to track, maybe 13, and that's Western world. Well, actually, we can include Asia, because they don't buy games. Um, but that's the, that's the universe. The mobile game market right now is probably roughly 20 billion of that 91 that, that Gordon was talking about. Mobile tablet, and then free-to-play PC is hard to track, but probably another four or five billion and growing. Um, so for sure, all the free-to-play stuff has overwhelmed the console, console side. I think the console side of the business doubles or triples as soon as publishers go off console. So I expect that that's going to happen in 2018. I don't think you're gonna see twice as many people buy FIFA the first year, but FIFA sells 18 million units a year to 250 million people who have consoles a billion people watch the FIFA World Cup final. So it strikes me there are at least 18 million more people who would like to play FIFA off console. So I think the opportunity to make great games is only getting better. Everybody knows the opportunity to make you know, small session, simpler games is exploding. And the good news is that those two things are gonna converge. So the Candy Crush mom 
the, the woman who never played a game in her life but is addicted to Candy Crush is no longer going to tell her kid, quit playing games, get outside and get some exercise, you know, play with your friends. She plays games, it's okay. We've all talked about Nintendo dads. It's Candy Crush moms that are going to lead the future. So I think that, and this is a bold prediction that I will tell investors because I believe it. I think the market for selling games is going to probably double every aspect of it. Double the console market, double the mobile market. I think this is going to be the largest entertainment market on the planet, and I think you guys are at the right conference at the right time. So thanks for indulging me. I don't think I'm able to take questions, so I'm going to just evaporate into the ether. Thanks for having me. That was my fireside chat. There you go.